a full hour with John Ann Winchester. That's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. We only did that piece way back sometime, you know, like that. That's right. But it's so good to see, and you're looking great. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Finally, spring has come to New York. Finally. I didn't think it was ever going to come. 2007, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's been a long time. But we want to talk about uh, CCCUN and other things, but it's really good. I'm glad we have this up before you go back across the sea. But Welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations, where it's a distinct personal pleasure to welcome to the program an old dear friend of myself in Conversations and the world, I would say, and that's John Ann Winchester. And she's billed here as, let me get it straight, the International, Coordina uh, International Relationship with the Alliances for the Communications Coordinating Committee for the United Nations, one of the very oldest and most well-established NGOs uh, relating to the United Nations, I think there is in the world. And John Ann, welcome very, very much to Conversation. It's so good to welcome you to set. Thank you, Harold. It's wonderful to see you again and to be here. You're looking great. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you could. We're going to talk about. There's a number of things that you're always busy. Whenever you talk to John Ann, she's got about a million fire uh, irons in the fire, and she's got a million things going on. It's been like that ever since I've known you. We're going to want to talk about that in detail. But could you share your own personal background, where you were born and raised a little bit, as a way for us to wade into this uh, program, uh, education, a little bit of that sort of sure. thing, if you would, please? Sure. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, uh -huh. which at the time was right on the Mason-Dixon line in the United States. Really? Right between the North and the South, so it's always been in limbo, so to speak. Ba Baltimore, Baltimore Maryland. Was it really? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. And at that. The, that time, it uh -huh. was, I'm dating myself, Yeah. but it was... Uh, the third largest port in the USA. It's no longer that. It may be sixth or seventh or so now. Uh huh. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. God, I didn't realize that. Mason yeah. Dixon. Mm -hmm. I would have put it down in Virginia somewhere. No, no. We're on the northern side of heading through Washington. Yeah. Now, Maryland, Baltimore really is a bedroom community for Washington in some ways. Yeah, I guess it is almost. Right. What's an hour to Washington or About, so? Yes. Something like that. That's right. But we're and also home of of Johns Hopkins University, a world famous big chemical company. Medi yeah? Johns Hopkins University, yeah. a big yeah. uh, medical pioneering medical institution. I'm thinking I would drive on 95. I see a big chemical something. Oh, you, you're probably still in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. There's a lot of that, right? Anyway, no, anyway, it's, it's so a booming town. Okay, you know, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so what was your family background? That sort of thing was it academic or what? Uh, well, my father uh, worked with my grandfather's factory. We manured toy watches. Oh, really? So oh. during the Depression, when people didn't have money, our company did all right because for a few cents, a little toy could be bought. And then my father became a lighting director. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother was a stay-at-home mom up until later, and then she went into the business world. She went into business world yes. with your dad? With No. She, oh. uh, actually, I was the eldest of five girls, so all girls? they had to worry about marrying off a whole lot of girls. So yeah, she right. went into the bridal, that, that <laughs> bridal boy industry. Just, no boys, huh? No boys. Oh, no boy. Boys. Too bad. Well, anyway, that's uh, not too bad. But anyway, no, that's good. Right. And you were doing that. And then what about your own back? You went to school? That I sort went of to thing? a private girls school for uh -huh. many years in Baltimore uh -huh. and then I went to Cornell University uh -huh. and my real education began when I went to Mississippi for the big COFO Freedom Summer in 64 and 65. You were Mississippi in 64, 65. Was it? Right. A big it summer where all the students and the lawyers and the ministers came into the South to register voters. Good for you girl. Right, Good right. for you. So really. that was where I got a really in-depth um, experience and education in the history and the process of the United States of America. There, w there was a lot of good things blowing in the wind in '64, in the '60s. Yes. I mean, the Voting Rights Act, uh, all the you know the anti -J -J Jim Crow stuff. Uh, class action was brought in, and there was this kind of thing. War on poverty, even there was yes. a lot of things. It was a positive and optimistic time against a uh, a long hi historical. Uh, inheritance of institutions which were outdated and the times called for a new vision and there was an optimism in the air don't you think in the 60s oh, indeed. and so forth? Indeed, yeah. yes. Uh. But of course we didn't have the tools that we have now of connectivity. Yeah. Television was happening but we didn't have of course the internet. Yeah. We didn't have computers or cell phones or all the things that now allow us to communicate instantaneously to anyone anywhere in the world. Yeah, we have connectivity now that maybe we're heralded. But, but that theme about how there's the, the institutions you've inherited are in a certain sense outdated by the t 
technological and communications corporate uh, co communications communi capability that was evolving we're still in that kind of an era it's the, that that dynamic between those two that's right ideas still and is course operative the, the missing think. link is the evolution of consciousness okay and to what degree does consciousness drive the technology and to what degree does the technology drive the evolution of consciousness ethics have you Justice. got that all figured out now? Uh, well, I think we're all <laughs> just dancing with it as yeah. fast as we can. Yeah. Talhar de Chardin would deal with that. He had the idea of the omega point. There's a point where we'll reach a certain kind of thing. Bucky Fuller, who we both admire, yes. I think I certainly do and I sure. know you do, was some of the people who were thinking on a large system scale of trying to understand where we are in terms of the evolution of technology and uh, consciousness, as yes. you say. Yeah, right. And even the evolution of the planet itself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a large school of thought, both in the scientific community, but also in the mystical and the spiritual community and in the indigenous community, mm -hmm. that planet Earth is a living entity. Yeah. Certainly, it's an <coughs> interconnected entity with many different systems all working synergetically or synergistically. Yeah. And so, when the United Nations was founded mm -hmm. and the charter was written, mm -hmm. we didn't have environmental problems in 1945. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the environmental issues that we have now, so it's not even mentioned in the charter. We hadn't moved into space, so space isn't mentioned in the charter either. That's right. That's so true, yeah. Yeah, so there are all these different um, awarenesses that mm -hmm. have evolved as we extend our own capabilities, our own sensory perceptions beyond our what we can touch and feel in the immediate moment right. through the mediation of technology. Yeah. And we're pretty unique that way as a species, apparently, I think. Apparently. Apparently. I mean, well, you look around, what other creatures can extend their... Because technology, and uh, there's uh, all extensions of consciousness yes. or of the central nervous system into the environment, and you can manipulate the environment and James Joyce had a line saying, we shape our tools, thereafter our tools ape us. Or, Buck Mc or Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. The, yes. the, 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 the technologies we create have more effect upon us than what's being communicated over them, if you look at communications yeah. media. So it's an interesting time and a, a time of coming to a, uh, a new kind of, do you think we live in a time of qualitative transformation? I think it's a wide open game right now. Mm -hmm. You know, as a species, we're playing out so many different fantasies, um, different members of our community, whether it's women or children or people from different regions in the world that have been suppressed through colonialization or women have been suppressed for, we say, Ever. By <laughs> forever, well, at Seems least 5,000 years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as we feel the winds of freedom blowing uh -huh. and the promise of freedom blowing, people are sometimes breaking out the girls gone wild syndrome or the terrorism syndrome when there's no hope for the future uh -huh. except a, a violent expression of fear and dissatisfaction. So I think we're seeing extreme versions of human self-expression and the opportunity to create a common vision, something that we can all share, something that we can all build together. Mm -hmm. And the connectivity, I believe, is important. And the tools, th uh, the costs of which are coming lower and lower, down and down, um, help us really think and act and move together in a new way. We certainly haven't reached critical mass yet in terms of how many people actually have access to the internet or to cell phones. We know when we talk about this a lot in the United Nations system, mm -hmm. we need to build digital bridges to deal with the digital divide and the north-south issues, different kinds of consciousness when you live in a warm environment or when you live in a cold or seasonal environment. Mm -hmm. So those things are happening as travel happens, as the pictures of different realities come to people. Mm -hmm via one medium or another. I know you've been playing around, you told me, with YouTube and some oh other ways. Oh, it's great, yeah. Right, of sharing the kinds of programming you've been developing all these years. Mm -hmm. um, you've got this, uh, the, 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 the idea that we may be at a time of uh, qualitative 
there have been a lot of changes. And I see one of the things, and you, you, we're going to talk about this thing you're involved with at the UN where the geological people have put together and have, uh, you know, the, 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 to look at the Earth and everything. One of the things, one of the items they had in the ten items was the understanding the evolutionary process or understanding the evolution of life. Because we're all, as you say, we're all interconnected. Yes. And I think the Vedics, you know, the, the Hindu, I don't know, they think consciousness was pre-existent to material world. I think the West thinks the materialism, the consciousness grows out of the material world existence and everything. But they say it's a seamless web and there are no academic disciplines or divisions in reality. It is a seamless web. Yes. I mean, that's a fact. Yes, that we, a living, we breathing web of life. Yeah, and they have a, they, and we're all interconnected. Yes, and we always have been, I guess, in a certain sense. But we got all these divisions and so forth. But uh, you know, and then the John uh, is it? What's it? Ed Lovelock. What's his name? Uh, Lovelock in England has the idea of the Gaia principle, where they you draw off from the Earth, you see it, the Earth, and all the biological processes are as like an organism. Yes, which is an interesting sort of planetary look that we have available to us now since we put the satellites up in the sky and so forth. But do you see the Earth that way? It's, a, it's a, an organism or, well, you ask or is that too reaching too romantic a view of things or what do you think? Well, you asked about where I grew up. I yeah, grew and up also your education. You were yes. studying ecology and things? And well, as a child, as yeah. a young child, I was very blessed to live in two different homes mm -hmm. while I lived in Baltimore. And both of them had gardens, that my grandfather was a gardener, mm -hmm. so I always had a chance to watch things grow and right. sometimes participate. But then if I kept going past the garden, I was lucky enough to have woods with little streams and all sorts of things coming different seasons. Wow. So and, and sweet woods, not you know full of dangerous critters and so on. Mm. So I had a chance to sneak away often as a young child right. and sit by little streams and see the things that I saw and talk to the nature spirits and creatures that I could see. And, mm -hmm. and so I knew at a very early age that there was more going on than meets most people's eyes. Yeah. And um, I, I got a chance because we do live in a seasonal clime. We do here, climate yeah. here, so yeah. you can see the changing of seasons and colors and sap rising and mm. leaves falling. So at an early age, I knew that there was this dynamic system. Yes, right. And yeah. then and uh -huh. then you know later on yeah. as things progressed and other people looked at things at larger scale because mm -hmm. of technology and the satellites and the microscopes and the telescopes mm -hmm. you know we began to get a new picture as we moved out into space also. Mm -hmm. So Al Gore talks about in the inconvenient truth. Yeah. Um, that first picture from space that united us all in a Transcends it yeah, new right. way, the yeah. Earthrise picture. Oh yes, right, right. And it took several other Apollo shots before they got the picture where the sun was behind the Earth, yeah. so you could see the Earth as a whole. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the power of imaging, and the power yeah. of imagery, mm -hmm. of pictures to speak a universal language is something that's all has always fascinated me. That's true. A picture yes. does have a universal language. It doesn't. You know, if you see a, a picture or something, it could resonate to anybody in any language. They have maybe. That's right. It's interesting. The concept of, uh, of uh, cognition and everything is yeah. an interesting thing. And it's also going to be interpreted mm -hmm. because of cultural mores and the mm -hmm. way the brain works when it's been programmed in different cultural ways. So mm -hmm. to have us be able to come to a common decision as a planet-wide species, mm -hmm. that we would prefer to have a culture of peace. That's the core mission of the United Nations system. Beat the plowshares in, or the, the swords into, into plowshares plow yeah, and no war no more. Now, they've been saying that for a long time. I think that's well, from that's Isaiah, I think, you indeed. know, from the prophetic thing. And the spiritual people have been saying that. But the politicians seem to have ignored that readily, and they seem to be ignoring it today as we look out upon the world. Well, I think or the leaders of the secular world or of the world. I think there's a difference, but there are several types of people, and we do seem to have a type of human being that somehow got born with a war profiteering gene. It even seems to run in families where, for some reason, their imagination for building wealth can extend only so far as profiting by war. And it's certainly been around for as long as we know recorded history, you know, you have to take over someone else's um, 
territory mm -hmm. and rape and pillage and whatever and well, you're, very you're deficient in imagination I would say that that mm -hmm. is the only economics that we can conjure as a human species so my hope and I think yours is with the kind of programs you're doing that we could collectively through the sharing of ideas and information and pictures come up with a new vision a new image of what we could have as a planet mm -hmm. I like to say my personal agenda is to offer the choice to the peoples of the planet of the new paradise the new paradise, the new paradise. We have paradise. all the elements mm -hmm. on this planet mm -hmm. to have a paradisical planet and mm -hmm. lifestyle. You know, infinite species, infinite resources, mm -hmm. um, limited only by our imagination and by um, the consciousness with which we interact and use those resources. Do you think we've come to that in a new kind of way in the modern era where you and I sit and talk now? Or has it always been like that? Or has there something changed, and what is the dynamic that changed? And people look at evolution, many people see it as a, a Darwinian struggle for space. Uh, plants vie for sunlight and space. Right. They vie if they do not get the sunlight they need, they die. Most of the species have died out throughout the evolutionary process. It's been a hard struggle in lots of ways, and one that is rent in tooth and claw in terms of the survival of the fittest notions of uh, competition between the various creatures for space and the sustenance and capability to survive. Indeed, we can look at the negative detrimental struggle aspect. Mm. Sometimes I use the word struggle to mean more a dynamic, you know, interplay. Yeah. Spiritual, compassionate warrior approach to working with things and, and the difference between struggling and stewardship, yes. between struggling and dynamically relating to the different elements. Mm -hmm. You know, we have earth, air, fire, and water. We have the different kingdoms of nature, mm -hmm. which run from viruses and bacteria and funguses and yeah. all these different dynamic processes that are the earth's ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So learning how to really relate to them is what I think I've come to talk with you about yeah. and this opportunity as we move into, in the U United Nations system, yes. we like to declare official years so that we can, as a systems-wide set of institutions, because the United Nations is several, multiple different types of agencies. Each one is mandated to deal with specific topics, whether it's UNICEF children or the food, agriculture and food organization. Mm -hmm and where areas of specialization can take place, but to be able to look to the whole system and think and move and act as a whole system is what the International Year of Planet Earth is designed to That's do. That's the thing you've put me in touch That's with. It's very interesting. It's yeah. uh -huh. Well, it, it was a vision mm -hmm. of a few scientists. Mm -hmm. One of them was a man named Eduardo de Moldar. Mm. He is a man named Eduardo de Moldar. Mm. He is currently the executive director of the International Year of Planet Earth. The International Year of Planet, Planet Earth. Earth. That's what we're going to be talking about. That's that. right. Yeah. And that was, um, he was actually running for president of the International Union of Geological Sciences, and he'd been okay. invited to run. And he was thinking about what he would like to propose, and he came up with this idea because he knew about the United Nations declaring official years so that you could study something in depth. Mm -hmm. And so he came up with the idea of the year of planet Earth. Mm -hmm. For instance, 2003 was the year of water. That's right. Many yeah. conferences uh -huh. on water. Now uh -huh. we have a decade for water, and we're halfway mm -hmm. through that. Right, okay. Um, we have uh, 2006 was year of desertification. Okay. And uh -huh. so we, I was in China for most of that year. You've and been in China a lot. I lately, have, yeah. I have, right. in yeah. Asia, Pacific region. And there were several conferences in China alone on desertification, but they were happening all over the planet, Africa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. America, South America, because this issue of soil dying or appearing to die and deserts blooming yeah. um, and water drying up are part of a larger geophysical geological process. Big important part, yeah. Right. And yeah. they're also part of humans not understanding for thousands of years how to grow things, how to manage forestry and soil, and things that 
some people were able to understand just because they loved the earth and they watched the earth and they listened to the earth. They didn't mm -hmm. just try to do what they wanted to do. They had a feedback system right. with the earth. And that in some cultures, that was the natural way. Um, and yeah, in other they cultures, would learn. They would learn right. what things work, and then that's they could right. use them. Yeah, yeah. It's that's called right. education and learning. Right. Yeah. Biofeedback. <laughs> yes, biofeedback <laughs> from, the from the from the earth itself. Right. Yeah. yeah. So those were successful cultures, but in other cultures, um, the need to feed a larger and larger population, the need to have fuel mm -hmm. for a long time. Of course, wood was the primary f fuel, mm -hmm. um, and that would pollute in its own way. But if you forested too aggressively and went out and scavenged too aggressively, suddenly you didn't have wood anymore. Look at what happened to Easter Island. That's right. Yeah, that That's was a right. very example of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. our own country or was forested. Well, we still time. got a lot of forests. We I still think, are. But yeah. yeah. But but I do think it's a sin they're cutting down those original forests oh. that still exist. You know, out the the redwoods out in the west. I think there's something uh, sacrilegious about that. Well, but next to war profiteering, I suppose yeah, right. predatory practices in whatever right. sphere are uh -huh. showing to be detrimental. But yeah. worse mm -hmm. than that, they're just misery-inducing, mm -hmm. aesthetically deprived, and mm -hmm. they certainly don't allow us as a human species to realize our highest potential. Our so highest potential for all, particularly for all. because we've been, we, we had the year 2000 Millennium Goals, yes. the, the Agenda 21. There's been a great deal of thinking around and in the institution of the United Nations that has presented a responsible kind of understanding of what we might do collectively in a, what Bucky Fuller would have called a living way pattern yes. uh, that should be made aware of because it just seems to be a lot of countervailing forces existing in the world, like weaponry and so forth that exists, and they're all on hair trigger alert, and yes. they will alert us to the fact that we could apparently, Michio Kaka was on a program this yes. series a couple of days ago, he said that weapons are such now that we could, if they were unleashed, destroy the whole species. Yes. Which we couldn't do within our lifetime. It is, we it's are, a double -edged we are sword, on, the as Bucky would say, a critical path. Uh -huh. and. The reason that I'm so excited about yeah. the year of planet Earth, uh -huh. which I believe will be the rest of our lives, okay, but yeah. in the UN system, we say the years of a planet yes. Earth, yes, yeah. but in the UN system, yes, first uh -huh. we declare one year, okay, yeah, for in-depth study. That's and right. You've been involved in the UN for a long time. Yes, right? I have. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, I have. Yeah. Through working with the Communications Coordination Committee for the United Nations. That was originally the Speakers Bureau? Yes, it was. One, it was the, but one of the very earliest NGOs. 1946, April 46. 46. It couldn't be much earlier than That's that. That's right. And wasn't, uh, wasn't Margaret Mead involved in the foundation? She was with the Earth Society Foundation. And Bucky so, was but involved? But I'm sure everyone who were futurists and yeah. forward thinkers mm -hmm. or deep anthropological thinkers mm -hmm. Sooner or later, they all met each other. They mm. talked to each other. Their organizations cooperated. Yeah. And that was one of the things that the Communications Coordination Committee for the United Nations was founded to do. Uh -huh. First, we were a speaker's bureau and a media liaison. Mm -hmm. We helped the UN get the story out. We still do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, we began to see that if representatives from different organizations with different issues came together to meet in a council, in a regular membership meeting. We could develop programs together. We could inform each other of different perspectives and how the different issues interact and There's a lot of education goes on at that United Nations. Well, the oh, UN these conferences is... conferences, they call oh, it. It's like it's a university it is. in large measure. It is. It's yeah, the and most amazing. And it should amazing. be shared more with the world, perhaps, the findings That's and the excitement of those, don't you think? I yeah. absolutely believe yeah, the right. UN, as its own systems evolve and as the technology has evolved, is getting more and more online and streaming media. Mm -hmm. We still have a major situation and problem in the United States that the media, for whatever vested interests, agendas, likes to minimize the role of the UN. But when you go to other places on the planet, mm -hmm. particularly China, mm -hmm. you see what deep regard the UN system is held. That's encouraging. I because didn't realize that. Yeah, okay, the UN yeah. does deliver amazing, amazing services every single day and night of the week. Uh -huh. There are millions and millions of people in refugee camps now, either yeah. from war, the Darfur situation, or Awful. natural disasters, yes, yes. tsunamis, earthquakes. We're still dealing with the Sumatra tsunami of 2004. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
the um, the big earthquake in Afghanistan and right. Pakistan. That was and awful. Yeah, Kashmir. Kashmir yeah. and the, all these things that keep happening, and we're having more and more floods and mudslides mm -hmm. and Old relatively, Bangladesh, uh, yeah. of course, yeah. and other places that haven't seen them before. Yeah. I mean, I was speaking to a friend this morning, mm -hmm. uh, April twenty fifth, two thousand and seven, rather, mm -hmm. and they had a tornado watch in Houston. Yeah, yeah. And he wasn't sure what was going to happen with right, the weather there. Right, so yeah. these things are happening at Katrina here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Big tornadoes in the south and southwest and in the. I think our national system could have done better with Katrina than they seem to have been able to muster. Well, this is part of what oh. the International Year is designed to do. Is okay, help the us International Year. Yeah, of right. planet Earth. Uh, of planet Earth, okay. Right. Uh -huh. So may, perhaps in a minute we could look at yeah, some of the Yeah, we have a PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides yeah. we're going to show, but maybe you could set it up as yes. it, we lead into it. Yeah. So this was initiated through the vision of, as I was mentioning, Dr. Eduardo de Moldar and the International Union of Geological Sciences and UNESCO, United Nations Education, Science, and Cultural Organization, uh -huh. which is um, based in Paris, France. The United States just rejoined a few years ago. After they finally did rejoin, they did, right, because they, they, they had dropped out. They did yeah. in the Reagan era, and they just rejoined. Uh -huh. um, and so UNESCO has always been kind of a maverick, leading-edge organization. They were one of the first to adopt that radical medium of television and mm. the use of television and Who's the internet. Who's the DN there? He was really a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so oh. the uh, it's a smaller agency compared to maybe the United Nations Development Program. Uh -huh. It's not often as well known mm -hmm. um, in this country as UNICEF, the Children's mm -hmm. yeah. Educational Fund. But it, it has always kind of set some tempo, and w one of the key themes of or of the several themes at UNESCO is that cultural diversity is as important as biological Biology. diversity uh -huh, uh -huh. and that with the connectivity that is rapidly moving over the face of the earth mm -hmm. we have a chance to build a knowledge society mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. based not just on the manipulation of data mm -hmm. but that can help us evolve consciousness knowledge and hopefully wisdom mm -hmm. that we can live in wisdom on the planet wouldn't that be wonderful hallelujah do you think we ever have in a system i think there have been some very high cultures where things were in dynamic equilibrium we may have lost um the records of those things mm. because the, the I mean, war profiteers the pilots you know the the rapers and pillagers often come in and the first thing they do after raping and pillaging is burn the libraries and burn the documents burn, and the, burn the, library the art in, or the library in alexandria exactly. it was a sad loss and that kind of thing sure. yeah and, and that's it's not the only one so and it's been a long struggle and it it's has. up an evolutionary line that yes. hominoids is here we're here and then we get to this point and now we reach the point and come back to that thing we reach the point where we've got such capability on the destructive side Whereas it used to be Genghis Khan, or no matter what they would do, they could wipe out the tribe in the other village, steal all the grain or do that, but the species would continue. Yes. But we're at an existential we point are. where it would mean the end of all Homo sapiens and a good deal of the life if they were to unleash the destructive capability that's developed since between the time when you and I were born and yes. the present moment. Yes. So it's an existential new situation which might present positive Averse sides to that destructive scenario, which might begin to resonate with the dreams throughout all of history of liberation or of a whole involvement of the full biography and capability of all people within the uh, uh, almost utopian kind of thing. They try to dismiss that word. Bucky well, wrote a book, Utopia or Oblivion. Yes. It seems to be that's our lot now. In turn, either we find a vision through to where there's going to be this transformation, which might be liberating in a new kind of Absolutely. way that's not characteristic of history, Absolutely. or uh, we're going to wipe it out, or we'll muddle through for a while as we have. But we're in that kind of a time now, don't we you are. think? We are. And we this thing, this initiative, the Coordinating Committee for the UN helps get those ideas out that can help that institution, which has a world overview and a structure that is very important and should be so safeguarded by all people of goodwill, it seems to yes. me. And the, the CCCUN uh, helps that. And then you're involved with trying to lay us on with this group and other groups internationally with that coordinating committee to let people know and get the word out about some positive possibilities that are there before us in terms yes. of the contemporary situation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Have we said enough? Or should we say a little more about the communication coordinating committee? Well, I think the point for today is okay. 
the International Year of Planet Earth. That's a very good organization, though, the CCCU. Yes, and yes. You're a, a member of that and have been, yes. and it's been there since 46, did you say? Correct. Boy, correct. that's almost right from the get-go. It huh? is. Yeah, it they've is. been there, and so it should be called attention to that. Yes. But you're a member of that and so forth. But now, let's talk to this more specifically to this International Year of the Planet. Tell me when you came upon it, and let's talk about it. We got a PowerPoint presentation. Everybody. Well, this was kind of a magical mystery tour, actually. Okay. I had, because of watching your work over the years, mm. and really, I like to say you're the Edward R. Murrow of public access. Well, that's a great compliment. For I, well, that's how I feel. Talking to a lot of people. Yeah. You've talked to some of the real um, pioneers and s and leading thinkers and movers and shakers of our time over these years that you've done this, over 2,000 programs, I think you told me. And to have people like Bucky Fuller and Michio Kaku and others like that mm. among the people that you have sat like this with is um, very interesting molecular well, very memory that you well must it's have. Very in and no, more than molecular memory, it's memory on tape and it can be Indeed. shared. Indeed. And it's so good to be able to put those up on YouTube yes. now because you can do and that. Put with it into a, a. You can put it in an individual. That's within the reach of what an individual can do without getting involved in some sort of a process that's going to, like through the corporate media, things are eliminated because of market decisions yes. and so forth. But you can just do it, put it out and put it out there and it's there, and then people will if they want to. Democratization of like information. It's like an educational process. Yes, like yes. Uh, you teach university. It's like a university. The internet is like a big university, an autodidactic university. Yes. And it's a place where people can go to get information. And I think the information you're going to glean from this planet Earth is going to be made transparent and available through the communications that are developing. It's a very promising part of the human condition yes. and scenario, don't yes. you think? So what happened was, hmm. Dr. De Mulder had the idea to do an international year. He already was in touch with Dr. Wolfgang Eder, who at the time was the chief of the Earth Sciences Division at UNESCO, which is under the larger science. That's in arm Europe? It's in France, Paris, 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 UNESCO's uh -huh. headquarters in Paris. All right. So together they brought this idea. The president of Tanzania and the government, the member state, Mm -hmm. government of Tanzania was willing to sponsor it at UNESCO. Mm -hmm. It passed unopposed at UNESCO and then it was brought to the General Assembly for approval. And it passed also unopposed at the General Assembly by level. By acclamation. By acclamation. Which meant then that we could begin to move in the direction of taking the theme of planet Earth, yes. setting the goal, one, of showing more policy makers and decision makers how much information is available to make better informed policies about the use of resources, how sustainable development needs to take into account the stewardship wonderful, of resources. Wonderful, wow. They also had a goal of seeing that more young people chose earth sciences. As we, as an educational process, we went, hmm. you know, the geologists are the ones, for instance, who help us find water. Whenever a city is built, or even a neighborhood is you built, know the you have to know what the, the underlying rocks, yeah. structure is. You no. have to know what where the water is. All those different no. things. You need to understand. Now we're hearing more and more. This is the year of heliophysics. 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 Helio. 2007 is the year of heliophysics, and that's sun? the yeah. sun. Uh -huh. And we're hearing a lot these days about solar flares and how it affects our communication systems. Mm -hmm. You know, all of our our financial systems run through satellites. And so yeah. if you're having flares and your eyes and ears go blind or get knocked out, it can seriously destabilize things. Y2K showed us how everything that we rely on through computers, from water systems to sewage treatment yeah. systems to the oil systems, well, mm -hmm. the UPS and FedEx delivery, all those mechanisms that yeah. create the planet-wide global culture are all connected through the computers. They are, just in time systems of That's right. uh, everything. Just, yeah, it's all tied together. And That's everything. right, and the solar and flares yeah. can destabilize that. And well, the Y2K thing had a great deal of uh, paranoia about that, and then it didn't seem to happen. Oh, it did happen. It, it didn't happen on the con what dimensions happened? that were the being projected. The wonderful thing that happened yeah. was that people spent hundreds of thousands of hours making sure that systems stayed working. Mm. So as we watched the new year progress around the planet, the lights people. stayed on, uh -huh. but I and others monitored it for months afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple cal calamities that happened. And six months later, the oil prices 
peaked because uh, oil cracking plants were going down. Su there was because sewage, of Y2K, Y2K problems? Y2K failures, yeah, yeah really? but they didn't want people to know. It wasn't the calamity that was being oh, projected thank, in thank disasters. Thank heaven, and thank all thank the hard goodness, work yeah, of all the gonna, technology Yeah, guys. they were saying it could be the end of everything. Yeah, well, we if were, the computer, people worked if, very hard. If the computers all of a sudden stopped functioning by something like because of that double zero thing and everything like that, or if we lost electricity. Right. We were, if, if something knocked happen. out the electricity out, or the grid got knocked out or something, we everything would come to a it grinding halt. We're we're very it's very productive and capability lifespans expanded our capability to produce all this, but we're also very vulnerable in a certain we sense are. and so forth. We and are. Uh, we ought to be uh, aware of that and more and also to longer term trends like Mr. Gore. I remember he wrote that book Earth and the Balance was Correct. it back ten fifteen years ago. Right? Yes. He was an ecologist and very. No Noticeable. Uh, well, he talks about how he not learned polluting the environment and so in forth. In early university days, mm -hmm. he was exposed by one of his professorial mentors to the climate change and the global warming issues yeah. way and back. They were pushing it really hard in 95, 96 when they were there, and then it just got mm -hmm. sort of lost well, in the wind. Well, what he after said was that the media wouldn't cover that story. He yes. was talking about it regularly when he was running for vice president, when he was yeah. running president and the media just wouldn't cover it so it became a non-story yeah and it also but let's, got let's let's oh yeah talk let's about not, the year, that's the trouble it's also yeah. darned interesting yeah. and everything but like that. what but what yeah. i'm saying is yeah. that there are these themes and these threads mm -hmm. so the reason i mentioned y2k is because the interconnectivity of our technological systems mm -hmm. which have become integral to our life support systems right. are balanced and even overridden by the interconnectivity of our real life support systems. Mm -hmm. And the, the real resources on the planet, the core resources, without which life as we know it would cease, water, are water, soil, land. soil air. Mm -hmm. Those That's are the right. core commodities on mm -hmm. the planet, the mm -hmm. core resources. Everything else, minerals, oil, coal, those are commodities that we use in different ways. But mm -hmm. those core air, water and soil without them we cannot survive as human animals and right. organisms well, yeah. uh -huh. so how we manage that system mm -hmm. is why the international year has been created mm -hmm. so let's go look yeah. at the <laughs> okay just run through that <coughs> and bit. so what you have you have a PowerPoint thing. We've got sure. a CD here. And what, what is that going to That's going to show some of the dimensions. Well, just a few little. It's a very interesting site. Maybe we could say the site now. Yes. It's so the, the official site for the International Year of Planet Earth uh -huh. is www.yearofplanetearth.org. Year of Planet, Planet Earth Earth dot org. org, and we're going to go to some of the graphics that are within yes. that thing. It's a very, I've got it here right now, I've been going over it. It's a very rich and deep re uh, website. It's got a great deal of uh, capability for presenting data, uh, much like what Bucky Fuller and those people in World Game used to do, it put all the resources together and figure out how to make the thing work for everybody, which That's is right. a great, not good educational idea. And we're going to show some of those slides now, is that Let's it? Let's do that. Okay, we're talking with John Ann. Maybe we could set uh, John Ann Winchester. Maybe we could set up that uh, PowerPoint presentation, and she'll talk over it. So, if you could run first part, if you could, George, in the control room, run the first part of that presentation. Here we go. So you can talk over okay, this. Okay, that's good. So it's the International Year of Planet Earth. The theme is Earth Sciences for Society, and this is a slide that shows you the translation into seven different languages of. Uh -huh. Planet Earth, so it's Planeta Tierra, Planete Terre, etc. Yeah. So, uh, next please. Uh. So, the why do we have an International Year of Planet Earth? Do we have more on that slide? Yes. It's to demonstrate the great potential of the Earth sciences. Uh -huh. And to show us more, please? And to show us what we could do as a society to better steward our planetary resources, to encourage society to look at the, to make policy decisions more effectively, to steward the earth resources, as we say. That's a huge charge. That's a leadership charge that all presidents and so forth should have Absolutely. In, the in the foreground, but 
lot of environmental protection agency Absolutely. ministry yeah. of land and resources in and you're, china you're doing it in a way where it can be shared with the general citizenry that could give feedback to the political process the goal so this is very important yeah. absolutely the goal uh -huh. of this is total transparency mm -hmm. Good. Let's leave Beautiful. this slide up for a moment. Okay, please. And and there's a companion s a site which is called um, we call it the Transparent Earth site, and mm -hmm. it's called www. one geology o n e geology. dot org. Mm -hmm. And this has just been launched recently. That's going to take quite some time because the maps that we have and the study of the planetary resources, whether it's metals and minerals, water, soil quality, coal, oil, uranium, etc. Let's keep the slides up. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Um, are going to be a very serious uh, convergence because at this moment they're all in different standards. Some of them are in white papers on a shelf somewhere. Others are in satellite pictures or geological soundings. So it's going to take a while to bring this transparent one geology database it's a portal yeah. into the a portal. portal i like that term yeah yeah portal yeah. into the the stewardship and enlightened well, management of I, the I did resources. my doctorate degree in geography and one thing ah. we learned to really appreciate was cartography and maps because they're presenting a great deal of, in an ideogram way yes. great deals of information is really important and i would stress again one of the people bucky fuller had this thing world game and the world design science decade declared in 65 to 75 where they did exactly that they took the measure of the resources uh, population trends resources new materials all this kind of thing in a non ideologically lardered context of understanding what's going on and help the people participate Correct. in the process of understanding that process and encouraging a way that's going to uh, benefit the most possible people in the shortest possible time well, of course it seems to me that's the charge of what we're about here what's happened since world game it was called What's happened since Bucky <coughs> did the kind of surveys that he did mm -hmm. with the tools that he had available is that we now have rem remote sensing capabilities Absolutely. where they can tell by heat signatures what's going on Absol and what kind of yeah. minerals exist. Or so we have a whole And we can make it available to the whole right. wide world. That's right. We've got these satellites now and we can do, we can tap into NASA That's right. and some of the I distance uh, of this universe. It's an educational process yes. of the highest order. That's right. Okay, yes. So okay. Yeah, continue, so who's please. behind the International Year of Planet Earth? Okay, who is? It was founded by the International Union of Geological Sciences and the United Nations education, science, and cultural Let organization. Let me ask you, why UNESCO? geological sciences? Why not Just the international? Just because that was, that was who thought so of it first. So this is one group of academic or people who are geologists. thinking. Geologists. Geologists is one group. Or you could probably get a group of sociologists well, who would present data the that they think is really relevant. The other partners, to answer your question, okay. the other partners. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Of course. Uh -huh. There were 12 founding partners and 26 associate partners originally. So that's And they were all geologists. That's 30. Let's count. Yeah, 38 founding partners. Mm -hmm. um, no, they're not all geologists. Oh, I'm not saying they I mean, are that's hydrologists, one hydrologists, astrophysicists, oh, astrophysicists, heliophysicists, soil scientists. Okay, but why call them geologists? Well, geologist is the geologist. study of the of the resources of the earth. With all due respect, I think geography is the study of well, the resources of the world. Well, that's a mapping. That's a mapping. Geology. Mapping. Geology goes is beneath the morphology surface. Morphology of landscapes. It, it, yeah, but that's know. just the surface. Okay. Geology goes deep inside, all the way to the core. Well, there are volcanologists who are right. studying what's coming up from the core of the earth through right. the volcanoes. Now, do you bring any of the people who are concerned with things biological? Yes. And things like Surely. human beings and politics and economics and sociology and the whole, because it's all one thing. That and geology is, what is one discipline that as is a, where you've got a thousand disciplines. That's a good know? question. Yeah. That is exactly Bucky what Bucky did that. He brought everything but in. But things have changed a lot since yeah. he left this planet. Mm -hmm. We have better tools. We have the connectivity that he predicted, but we didn't have while he was yeah. still alive. Right. So he saw the bones of the, the earth with his synergetics. He saw the ley lines of the earth and the, right. the meridians, as it were, of the uh -huh. earth. And so he was a visionary as well as a scientist and, and an architect in his own well, way. Well, they couldn't put a title on him. That's true. They couldn't he put a title boundless. on him. They tried to give him a—they cut him out of Harvard for Let's hygiene when he was slide. young. 
but they couldn't put a title on them, and it's exactly that. Let's it's stay with the slide point. All right, so stay with the slide right, point. Because um, this, this is about what's happened since Bucky, Bucky and where we're going to yeah, go Yeah, but I want to talk. I want to reserve the right to talk to that very yes. thing because this is going towards specialization, yes. which is not necessarily what the new technology uh, augurs. The new, uh, Norbert Wiener said, pattern rec information overload, which we have in all the fields, permits pattern recognition. We don't need specialization. We need comprehensive understanding of the whole process. That's, That's all I'm saying. That's why I call, call it whole systems thinking. Yeah, but this is not whole systems thinking if it's based on geology. It's That's not one division. You're not That's what I'm making the point I, I, of. I'm trying to get you to look at the okay. slide. Okay. 12 okay, founding partners. I can't see because I don't have 12, the right, all right. spectrum. Okay, so, so <laughs> what you'll see when you go to yeah, the website yeah, yeah. Is, I've that been there, there, yeah, yeah. is that there are many organizations yeah. There are the 38 founding members, and now many other organizations are joining. NASA has come aboard. Very good. All right. Very so good. the idea is to bring a comprehensive Planet Earth roundtable together, a council together of all of the knowledge that we have, yeah. and to move into this pattern recognition of how we are going to survive and thrive in conscious stewardship of the world's resources, of the Earth's resources. Extremely important charge all right. so of all thinking people right. it seems, are concerned. Right. So yeah. we're well. at the very early stages. Could we have the next slide, Yeah, we please? have. Could you get another one, George? Thanks. All right. That's so, and more. Good. And more. Great. Boy, this is great. Yeah. So the focus is on science. The focus is on outreach. The website where you'll see more depth is www your planet earth dot org. Next slide. Next. Just let's roll that out. We have 12 beautifully produced brochures that you can find all up on the website to be downloaded. Everything there is transparent and accessible and you can download it all. I think there's one more slide. One, yes, keep going. Do you know so what these those are, are some of the brochures. What, what they, are those pamphlets covering? They cover geology and water and geophysics and different aspects that some of the scientists each wrote up a brochure. One of them is what's considered the business plan for the International Year of Planet Earth. And it talks about how institutions and organizations and even angel individuals can donate to the management of the International Year. Let's go to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. There we go. Next. Great. More. So there will be outreach programs. We'll be having television shows. We've seen a big round in the last month uh -huh. since the Oscars and The Inconvenient Truth won the Oscar, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Sundance Channel and Discovery Channel and CNN and the big media mavens are producing state-of-the-art, beautifully produced television shows. But we're also going in the international year. There, I think there's more on that slide we can add. We're going to be reaching out into the global citizens. We're going to be asking people to document the best practices that are going on in their own communities, whether it's a solar cooker, or whether it's a state-of-the-art windmill, mm -hmm. or whether it is um, people learning to cooperate at a diff different level to bring uh -huh. an eco-village into play uh -huh. where they live. I, I would personally, I'm going to be focusing myself on mega cities mm -hmm. and how you can turn a mega city into an eco city. Mm -hmm. Our own mayor here in New York, Mayor Bloomberg, for this recent Earth Day, has announced a commitment to going a lot deeper with how we manage New York City. Yeah, and yeah. all our cities. Yeah. All of our cities. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next slide, please. Great, and next next slide. That's good. So these are some of the examples of outreach. You can see all of this up on the website. They launched the international, it's really a triennium, uh -huh. three years. The official year of the International Year of Planet Earth is 2008. Okay. That will coincide with the Olympics. Yeah, hopefully that's true. That's true. Hopefully yeah. we'll do a lot. The Olympic bid was won by China mm -hmm. with a commitment to do a green Olympics, a humane Olympics, and a mm. technology Olympics. So. Oh. They're going to use the best technology they have. They're building of the greenest ever Olympic villages and facilities. In China in now. In China yeah. now. Yeah, because you're living a great deal of your time in I Beijing, am. aren't you? Yeah. So the Olympics mm -hmm. will be in Beijing, and the Water Olympics will be in Qingdao, which is on the coast. Uh -huh. And I believe the Equestrian Olympics will be in Hong Kong. So 
as often uh -huh. there is more than one site. Yeah, the Olympics are there and the presidential elections in the United States Indeed, of America. Indeed, it'll be a hot yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a hot year on the yes. old planet tonight, Indeed. right? Or, or this year, yeah. Uh -huh. So outreach uh -huh. is designed to be done both at an institutional level, at a national member state level. Uh -huh. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So these are just some of the things that we hope to see accomplished, and there'll be um, many results that we haven't even dreamed of yet. Yeah, there'll be synergies. Synergies. <laughs> next, yeah. next slide, please. So right now we have national committees. This is as of the 16th of April, 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, last I heard, and this doesn't even reflect that, there were 39 national committees and a regional committee. Most of those committees have been funded Mm -hmm. But the Secretariat of the, of the uh, International Year isn't fully funded yet. Um, and so part of what I'm doing is talking to various conscious corporations that are doing socially responsible or environmentally responsible missions mm -hmm. uh, about helping to underwrite the year. And, and there will be... And this is a thing that they can focus on to help. That's right. That's what you're giving them a focus to help. Okay. I mean, people... It's a project that people can get behind. It's, it's, I think it's beyond a project. It's uh -huh. really going to be a, a mega program. I like to say that that one geology site is yeah. the really the beginning, that transparent earth portal uh -huh. of resources yeah, is that's really the beginning of what I would call Planet Earth, Inc. Mm -hmm. How are we going to green the financial markets of the world? So that instead of just rampant gambling and you know currency speculation and all these uh, esoteric financial instruments that we have, which are running rampant now, running rampant and uh -huh. in large detriment to the, res the true resources, mm -hmm. water, soil, air, and the conscious use and recycling of the minerals. Mm -hmm. We're we not use. living up to the Millennium Goals very well, not it seems to me. We're behind. We are. We're there seriously. are eight Millennium Development uh -huh. Goals. Yeah. Let's get through the slide. Okay, sure, by all means. Yeah. So, uh, next slide, please. So, this just shows you a map in colors of where the committees are and where they need to be formed yet again. And you can see this on the International Year of Planet Earth website. Next, please. These are some of the patrons who helped make this possible. As I mentioned, the former president of uh, His Excellency Makeba of Tanzania um, helped make this a reality. Let's go to the next slide, please. And this is a picture of some of the school children. Tanzania? Tanzania. <coughs> where the man in the center in the gray, mm -hmm. light gray suit with the children is the president. And directly behind him is um, Eduardo de Molda, who's from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. and he's the the executive director. So this picture represents what we hope will happen, which is men and women and the youth together. An intergenerational process will help make us a su successful species mm. living in harmony, as the indigenous w people would say, mm -hmm. of planet Earth. And hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll discover true cooperation with each other and the planet. Mm -hmm. I just read something recently um, because there's a, a new system that's being launched for the democratization of the UN that we're not going to have... People's Assembly? It's People's Assembly, Parliamentary Assembly. Uh -huh. There are various versions of that. Harry Lerner's been on that that's for right. a long time. God we all bless have. Him. Yeah, we all we have. I know. Yeah, but he's been a real he's voice a of leadership in that's that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the purpose of the democratization of the UN also plays back into this theme of the international year, because if we don't all work together, if we don't all row together, e the high, hardcore scientists as well as the children planting seeds and trees and the elders planting trees and seeds by the side of the children, we may not get through this. We think we have a real clock ticking. So I think that's the end of the slideshow. Uh, I think that's slide. the end of the yeah. slideshow. We can come back to the set maybe. Yeah. Now that's really good. That's a, yeah. that's a hopeful thing. And what it is essentially, it's an educational thing yes. that can be. And, there and can not be just education. There should be a lot of educational things going it's on. It's not just education. Well, okay. Education is receiving knowledge and oh. having it made transparent and available. Right. The key is moving into action. As you said, uh -huh. we need to get the right template. You and I have talked about this, getting yeah, the information, I getting the template. I think the international year is the right template 
headed in the right direction. Hopefully, it will be in cooperation with Davos, the World Economic Summit. It's well, already in cooperation. Well, how about in the social forum that is the opposite of Davos? Well, and, mean, the, and the social forum, and they don't have to be put in opposition. Well, I believe I, that I Mother Earth mm. is going to be the big educator. And well, if we're not waking up fast enough, we will have more well, disruptions. Well, Mother Earth is something, yeah. But I think the, pe the people of the world over the whole existence of Homo sapiens have been ill-treated by the leaders, by and large. And the leaders of the world now do not have a vision. There's something that's going to have to g summon a thing from the people. And the people are not going to be just reduced as they have been throughout the whole uh, existence of uh, social patterns to uh, non-entities on the merge. There's going to have to be something that's going to shake this world up before people Well, I think it's already happening. I you think, think it is? Of okay. course. Okay. I don't see it well, in our political leadership. Well, I do. Leadership. I do. I think that... Good. Okay. That's a difference. That's a good thing. I don't just see because I in something more is going to happen. Because in our home country, we have a, a retrograde system that's taking apart 30 years of environmental legislation. Hopefully, that will shift. Okay. I think that the news that's getting out there now, the tools that exist, I heard some amazing figures just by a, a woman that I just spent Earth Day with uh -huh. uh, down in a small community on the coast of, uh, by the sea of New Jersey. Uh -huh. She and her husband made the commitment, they built a solar home, and then they went in and they put in the low wattage usage of um, fluorescent bulbs. bulbs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she said, it went from from a figure of six to three point five in terms of the kilowatt hours yeah. that they were consuming. Yeah, they're they're just mm. changing the light bulbs. Well, perhaps so. Well, it might be to be a positive and all that. I'm not. We so need to be. <laughs> uh, well, yes. That's okay, what but the not best practices are. So. No, but that's and nor do we want to. We the the people that are the leaders. You do not want to have because in every country you got a few people living very well in hotels. And the masses of people are not being treated Absolutely. by the system. Something's going to have to get down to the people, the real people, if we have a thing that's really system. That's right. I think the major problem is the same old guys that have been running things will be running things to the detriment of the masses. We need vision, and the vision thing is not very much found in our so-called leadership in our institutions. Well, that's that's my problem. That that template, we have to get that template that could include them in the end, but they're not our leaders. The <laughs> leaders are going to come from the people. Maybe we're saying the same thing. We are. Okay, good. <laughs> John, and that's it's the so purpose good of the International it. Year to give leadership as well as the people the knowledge and the information so they can have a wise leadership. Or to find out, it's like Bucky Fuller's idea of the world game and that idea about its, its systems, its everything. It's not just any particular specialized disciplines and so forth. So we need an education. We need a revolution of consciousness that's on this right. planet. And I think your work and this work. And your part work. of it. Well, yeah, we're struggling along and everything. Welcome to Conversations. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Your pleasure to have the perceptions of John Ann Winchester. She's a great uh, heroine, it were, in, tr in the trenches for a long time at the United Nations and in the world of a positive, uh, uh, ecologically appropriate world order. And I thank you really much for all the work. Thank you, Give Harold. my best to everyone at the co communication coordinating. <laughs> and this I want to be in touch with. I'm getting – Reed Stowe got off on his boat yes. into, the, into the world for a thousand, thousand days. days uh, right. NASA Sailing. is really important. You see you're getting involved with that. It's an educational thing, and I think public access is a way of getting word out to the world population is part of a process it's that's going to help involve the